demand after the live session. We will provide you with some of those details at the end. Also, we'd love to hear from you during today's presentation. During the session, if you are here on WebEx with us and have any questions for our presenters, please submit those through the Q&A panel where our wonderful panelists are ready to respond. If you experience any audio issues today, please use the call-in number displayed on the chat screen. I will post that once again momentarily. So let's get things started. We, we wanted to take a moment and just say welcome and thank you for attending today's virtual event on the essentials of enterprise network assurance. Uh, in today's session, you will hear us discuss network assurance and what it's all about, job roles related to network assurance, uh, the network assurance specialist exam and CCMP enterprise certification, uh, details on that exam, as well as some network assurance training. So without further ado, I'd like to kick things off by welcoming one of our first speakers, Abdiel. Abdiel, right over to you. Thank you, Tanner. Uh, my name is Abdiel. I'm a, a technical leader at Thousand Eyes Customer Engineering, and I want to get started with what network assurance is for the audience out there. Um, so, Tanner, if you could go please to the next slide. So, network assurance is a management, an IT management category. And, but in simple terms, you know, think about it when you open up your bank uh, app, you don't want it to be slow or all of a sudden not show your account balance or something. So, uh, network assurance is about providing great digital experiences to the end users. You don't want them to have a bad experience. You want them to be able to um, open up the service, the app, whatever is it that they are um, using that you are providing to them. And that needs to be a seamless uh, experience. Okay. So having explained what network assurance is, I want to go back and um, take a step back. Let's analyze the changes that have taken place in the last two decades. Okay. So let's, let's start with the migration to the cloud. So in the 2000s, uh, a migration to the cloud started. So all of the workloads and things that you used to host on your data center. Now were brought into the cloud and that trend. Gradually started to increase. Right. And when you think about that, there was a lot of benefits that came with it, such as scalability, security, the responsibility was shifted right from the, uh, network engineers that were responsible for maintaining all of these services on the data center now shifted to the cloud provider. But with it, it also brought some, uh, challenges, but think about, uh, about that for a second the cloud became the new data center. Uh, I think it's very hard to go, uh, you know, and ask people who use uh, who, uh, these technologies and find out that they don't use the cloud today, at least, or at the very least for some of the workloads, right? Uh, now, if you think about recent events, when the pandemic hit, we were all sent back home and we were left with a bunch of challenges in the network, in the, uh, systems uh, in, 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 in engineering side of things. And now all of the problems that were solved for in the office for your employees now started to uh, transition to the home, right? So that's why we say the home became the new office, um, but you can't really deploy an IT guy to every home location, right? That can help you as you were able to get help uh, when you were in the office. So it, it, when you were in the office, you would just walk into the IT uh, room and give them the, your laptop and tell them what your problem was, and they would fix it for you. You don't have that at home. And that brought a lot of challenges, right? How do you know if it's the bandwidth, if it's the uh, gateway, if it's the ISP, if it's a DNS outage in the internet, if it's the SaaS application failing, you know, all of these challenges that come from this shift. Now, when you talk about SaaS and APIs, uh, SaaS platforms have uh, been adopted uh, 
and that also changed so, so sort of the uh, things that you used to host in the data center to a SaaS application that's hosted somewhere else that's provided by someone. And it's good, it's easy to deploy, it's easy to use, but you lose something by uh, doing or having this shift. And ultimately, the network, you know, if you look at this slide that's on your screens, right on your screen right now, you can see that all of these services are scattered around the internet, you know, whether that's DNS uh, provider, a DDoS uh, protection, uh, content delivery networks, I already mentioned SaaS and API services, your data center, which is still there hosting some of your work workloads, the different cloud providers, all of these things put into uh, the picture now have made the internet the new network. Why? Because ultimately the network is the path that gets you to something, right? So in order for uh, these users to open up their bank account, um, they're in their app, in their phone, uh, and see their account balance. All of these services probably come into picture and are interacting together. So for someone, for those of, of you in the audience who work uh, troubleshooting network issues, app issues, whatever that is, when your boss calls you in the middle of the night and asks you to root cause where the problem is, you know, you're left with a huge challenge of being able to identify something yet that you don't see and that you don't control. Next slide, please. So it's beyond monitoring. Uh, traditional monitoring in this stage, in this scenario, has become obsolete. Why? Because you, you still have to baseline, detect, diagnose, optimize, remediate. And those are things that we will discuss in the certification exam and in the training. But when you put things into perspective with all of the changes that have occurred, you know, the new, uh, the cloud becoming the new data center, the home is the new office, the SaaS and the API services are the new app stack, and the internet is the new network. How do you troubleshoot something, again, that you don't see and that you don't control? Those are the two challenges that are common for um, everyone that has uh, been part of these uh, changes. Next slide, please. So at Dozen Eyes as a network assurance platform, we offer an end-to-end -end visibility. And when we talk about end-to-end -end visibility, we really mean end-to-end. From the user's perspective, all the way to the SaaS application or to the serve, uh, to API service they, they're consuming, uh, whatever that is and wherever it is, we're talking about points of presence, key points of presence that are able to give you intelligent data that you can act on. So whether that's from the endpoint perspective or the enterprise network perspective outside to the world of applications and services out there, or if we talk about uh, an outside inside perspective that would be our cloud agents uh, looking at your internal services and customer facing apis for example uh, and you want to monitor how they're performing and make sure that you're providing a good digital experience then uh, you can cover all those aspects with a network assurance strategy uh, and with thousand eyes so with all of these network intelligence, you're able to integrate with automated workflows that ultimately make uh, make you proactive. Next slide, please. So I'll talk about uh, briefly about use cases that we have that we cover uh, with the Thousand Eyes uh, network assurance platform. So in here, you can see, and let me start with hybrid work. I've already, uh, but first of all, uh, the first half is a multi-vendor type of integrations that we have, uh, strategies. And the bottom half of the slide, you can see Cisco and Cisco type of integrations. The customers are uh, looking at as a return of investment, even uh, sort of strategy, because you get to enable uh, downsonized agents in those things that you already own in very key points of presence that will give you very intelligent data and uh, actionable data. So starting with the hybrid work, we have the case of Wi-Fi monitoring. And for Cisco on Cisco, uh, there is the uh, Cisco WebEx integration. We, we are able to enable the, the 
agent in Rumo as devices now. We're also part of the Cisco Secure Client package, what used to be known as Cisco AnyConnect, and uh, some more. Uh, if we talk about co the core network, there's the SD1 uh, or one use case monitoring the VPN head and, uh, and monitoring the access layer. If we talk about Cisco and Cisco, uh, the, we support the Dallas IIS Enterprise Agent on Meraki MX devices, uh, Catalyst routers and switches, some models. Uh, and for SASE, you know, it's all about giving you the visibility uh, between your enterprise and the path that takes you to the SASE third party uh, solutions. So for that, uh, on Cisco, Cisco and Cisco, we have Cisco Umbrella. Uh, Meraki MX again, and Catalyst routers and switches. Now with the hybrid cloud, we have uh, data center routers and switches, cloud services, cloud network that we are able to monitor different uh, cloud providers, different cloud services. Um, and this is really key because uh, you know that cloud obfuscation is one of the trends that is moving uh, away from giving users visibility, right? One of the reasons being security, but also in, in, in the meantime, the people who are responsible for troubleshooting things, they don't really get the visibility. You can regain that visibility by deploying agents in key points of presence. Now, the last uh, use case, full stack observability, uh, we have these uh, enabled uh, last year uh, the standard open telemetry that allows us to share these network intelligence in terms of metrics uh, um, so that you can integrate with your platforms and use it as you your business requires or needs. And for Cisco and Cisco integrations, we, ha we have the Cisco App Dynamics integration, which allows you to see all the way from the routing uh, layer up to the application. Next slide, please. So let me do a quick recap. And for you to remember, network assurance is about providing awesome digital experiences to users. Um, I mean, to services and applications, but ultimately the users that are consuming or using these. Um, this is beyond a specific domain management. It's not only about network monitoring, passive monitoring. Uh, you know, before with passive monitoring, you used to have your SNMP and, and you can, uh, sum up the passive and active monitoring strategies there, there's also a task for that on the exam uh, it's more than just performance monitoring or full stack observability but all of these use cases that i've covered so far make are integrated in a single platform uh, in a single network assurance platform in a single ui and that is a thousand eyes um, now let's play a little game uh, and I'll do this quickly uh, for everyone on the audience to be able to see this. Um, give me a second here. Just gave you uh, presenter privileges, Abdiel, so you should be able to go ahead and share your screen. Thank you. All righty, I see this. And let's go to this AWS outage. This test was monitoring the US East 1 and 2 um, login console. So uh, you can see here on the left hand side, there's uh, HTTP server metrics, agent to server network metrics, and BGP routing metrics that we collect. And one of the things that I really enjoy from views 2.0 is that you can stack together these metrics in order for you to correlate and root cause, narrow down what where the problem lies. So that when your boss calls you and says, what's going on? You can say, oh, it's the ISP or it's a, a, a DNS hijack, a B, BGP hijack in this autonomous system. But in this case, uh, if we highlight the red bars, you can start to see that the agents reported uh, problems at the HTTP uh, layer. So what type of issues, if you look down here on my screen on the left-hand side, you can see the status by face uh, breakdown where we uh, give you the insight of where there, what, what, how long or 
well, here we're talking about errors. So errors for DNS connecting. So that's the uh, TCP three way handshake, SSL handshake, the send, sending the request and receiving or hearing back from the server, as well as HTTP um, information. So if you take a look at that and we go to the table view where we can compare the metrics that are being collected by our different agents, you can see here that there's an operation timeout. Um, uh, there are some 502 bat gateway errors. Let me just go to the agent to server network view and then panel visualization. Uh, from here, you can see that during the time of the outage, there was no loss reported. There's only this spike uh, over here, which is after the fact, after the, the event. So all of the agents are showing up green here from the panel visualization point of view. <coughs> Excuse me. So going back to the HTTP server view, we can narrow down this to an application level problem. And now you can answer the question, is it the app or the network? In this case was an application um, or a server problem that was uh, not able to respond. We know that 500 uh, level errors in, in the HTTP uh, protocol mean that there's a problem with the server. And so you can also see here 500 internal server error. So we've narrowed down in a few minutes uh, what happened in the, in the event. We have a blog post about this, so you, you can read more about it there. But let me finish by inviting you to an event. This will be a capture the flag event that we've uh, spin up for you. Uh, so click on the links that we are leaving uh, on the chat, that we're posting on the chat. And go ahead, register for an account. That's step one. And once you're done, registering with an account, you can go to the second link, which will be for you to be able to join the event. So you have a day uh, plus to join this event. And when you join, you will see a screen like this, and you will be able to see uh, all of the missions that we've published. So you can get uh, uh, your hands on these and start doing some event analysis from real events, uh, screen shares that you can access and look at all the metrics that we collect and start comparing and root causing uh, issues. I hope that's one for everyone and I'll stop here and now send it over to my colleague, Amir. Thank you, Abdiel. Thank you for joining the CCNP Enterprise Network Assurance Concentration, ENNA. My name is Muhammad Amir. And I am the exam program manager for this certification, and I hope everybody can hear me loud and clear. Thank you. So. Let's look at. The benefits, so why bother? Why do we get certified? So everybody to, in today's age understands. That by giving certification, you will be looking for either a promotion or going up in the ladder within the company or the roles or showing that what you tell on your resume or LinkedIn profile, you are certified and you know what you're talking about. So when a survey was done, 99% of the organizations, they use technical certifications to make hiring decisions. 81% of employers associate IT certification holders with increased quality and value. And 91% believe IT certifications are a reliable predictor of a successful employee. What that means for you, basically. Uh, so the surveys are there, it's a great job, everything is hunky dory, good looking good. What it means that when we show on our resume and when we look for a job or go for a job, that shows the hiring manager that I have the skills and I am certified for that. I know what I'm talking about. And that also uh, keeps you in sync with the tech, uh, sync technology changes and everything. And you, you know how things are moving too fast. So to show you some of the job roles that are associated with the network assurance certification, you will see here, it's not an exhaustive list, but you will see uh, if you go to LinkedIn or some other uh, search engines where we are looking for a job, or maybe some of the jobs are within your organization. So when we look for it, these are some of the roles associated with network assurance. 
we'll move to the next one. Now, <clears throat> when we talk about Cisco certifications, this is your one snapshot, one place where pretty much all the certifications are listed here. And you can see that the network assurance is part of our enterprise core exam, you know, core track, sorry. And within the core track, if someone wants to get a CCNP enterprise certification, for example, so how it works. Now we know that there are no prerequisites, so you don't need to be CCNA. You can go directly straight into the CCNP certification. But for CCNP certification, certification, what you need is an enterprise core exam and then any of these certifications. So if you look at network assurance, it falls under our multi-cloud suite where our multi-cloud suites are connect, secure, and observe. And observe is the network assurance piece. And if, for example, if somebody is not ready for the CCNP certification, and they just want to show the hiring managers or within their profile, they want to show that I know network assurance or I know how to deal with these tools and technology, they can just pass the network assurance exam and they get a specialized badge you can share that badge on your profile. It's a claimed badge. So anybody can click and go and see that you are certified for that. So it's not something that you're just showing and it's uh, not verified. So it is a verifiable link that you can go and click. So these are the two approaches <clears throat> that one can take for the enterprise CCNP. Either get CCNP certified or get the network assurance piece only and show that you know the network assurance piece. Moving forward, <clears throat> when we talk about exam, so let's talk about the exam. What is the most important thing about the exam preparation? The exam preparation, true source is the blueprint. The exam blueprint at the Cisco Learning Network. Now, what does that mean for you? That means anybody who's preparing for this exam must go through the blueprint. The way it works is that we build the blueprint. This is the first step for publishing an exam. We build our exam blueprint, and then after that, we share the same blueprint with Cisco Press and with the training team so that everybody's in sync. So it's not that everything is in isolation. So this is how it works. So if you go through the blueprint, if you pay attention and you go through every single task, you will understand how to prepare for each task technology, and what is the depth of knowledge, and what do you need for that. Now, Blueprint is, the way it is built, is built based on domains. Now, you can see here is there are four domains for Network Assurance Platform. There is a platform and architecture, the data collection implementation, data analysis, and insights and alerts. How much do I need to know for passing this exam for each domain is uh, based on the weightage that you see on the right side. 20% for domain one, 25 for domain two, 30% for domain three, and 25% for domain four. This is how it is distributed. <clears throat> and it is uh, also highlighted when you go through the exam, when you get your result, your score report, it shows your domains and how did you perform in each domain. Okay, so enough for the domains and everything. Now let's look into what is the blueprint? What do we talk? What are we talking here? And how do I know what is the depth of knowledge I need? What is the depth of knowledge required for each topic listed here? What does it mean? Sorry for that. Okay, so. Like I said, it is distributed based on domain. Now, each domain has tasks, and some may have subtasks as well. So, just to show clearly, this is how you see on this uh, slide where you have the platforms and architecture as a domain. And if you look at 1.1, this is one task, 2.3, it is the task associated with some. And there are sub subtasks associated with it as well. So you can see 2.3, A, B, C, D. And 3.1 is a standalone task as, uh, itself. Now, when we list sometimes, when we list subtasks, what that means is that the, the main task has the coverage under these subtasks, meaning the main task will talk about these 
subtasks listed here like networks such as TCP UDP or DNS or voice or web. Sometimes we also have in parentheses as well to explain, but this is how it works. Now, when we say that determine agent types, so one who is preparing must understand the verbiage, must understand that how it is related to the depth of knowledge required for each task. What we call in our part of the world is the Bloom taxonomy or cognitive complexity. In simple English, what that means? Difficulty level, plain and simple. So difficulty level is what defines the how much depth I need for each task. So let's look into some of the cognitive levels that we have. So these are some of the blueprint verbs that you will find on Network Assurance Exam. Describe, you will not see explain or understand. You won't see compare or differentiate, but you'll see configure, implement, select, diagnose, determine, analyze, validate, recommend. And what does it mean? You, you see the the last lowest bar depth of knowledge, right? So uh, and you can see it increases. When we talk about describe, what does it mean? Describe means that in this particular task about anything that listed with the described task, we will ask about theory or a concept or a memory recall. We will not ask you about how do you configure this or how to diagnose it or how to troubleshoot it and all these kind of things. It will be pure, simple theory and uh, concept and memory recall. And when we talk about configure or implement. So on the describe side, we call it at the remember level on a cognitive, just in case if somebody is wondering, then it is the cognitive level is remember. When you talk about configure, implement, and select, this is at the apply level. What does that mean? That means that we'll not just ask you about by clicking this or for, for a example, for a CLI, people who know CLI, Cisco CLI, uh, what is router OSPF does. So we will not ask you questions like this. We will ask you questions about some scenario something you want to achieve. There are some requirements. There is a scenario, or maybe a topology, maybe something. And then based on that, we will ask you, how do you achieve these goals? How do you meet these requirements? Uh, this is how it is going to be. It will not be as simple that uh, you click something or there is a command and what does it do? So when you are studying, basically you have to not only understand a, a screenshot on the GUI in terms of network assurance, if you're looking at it, or a CLI. But you also have to understand its implications or when you apply this or when you do this, how it impacts your network and what does it achieve for you. Similarly, for diagnose, you will find diagnose here and you see the determine, analyze, validate, recommend. These are at the analyze level. What does that mean for you? That means that you will be given a scenario, you will be given an exhibit as well. And on that exhibit, you will be shown some problems. Something is going on, something is happening. Like FDL showed you that there was an outage and it was going on. Maybe you will see something like that, who knows? But you will see something and then based on that, uh, you will be asked what's going on. What is, what is, so if it is a diagnosed, you will be asked, how do you resolve it? What is going on? And what is the issue? What is the problem? We'll not, most of the time, we will not ask you uh, how to resolve it because that uh, falls under troubleshoot. Troubleshoot is break and fix. And diagnose is what is going on? What is the issue? So this is how it will be when you are preparing, you understand all the issues related and you navigate, how do you navigate through and how do you come to pinpoint the issue? When it is validated, it's more like you already have accomplished something, you have done it, it is deployed, implemented in the network. Now you just validate what you did is right and it is working as it is supposed to be. So the questions will be around that part. When it is recommended, it's more, more like design, more like higher level. And this will cover mostly, uh, so it is at the, capacity planning level and everything, it will know that what 
are the issues? So maybe there are some baselines in some companies and they're, they're going through the baselines. And uh, once it is the baselines, then uh, you collect maybe for a month, maybe two, maybe three, uh, depending on how your organization is collecting the baseline or what are the rules for them. But then based on that, if you see a consistent problem happening, maybe at, at night for one hour or maybe in the daytime. So, so you, when you collect, and you see an issue, what do you recommend to resolve it? That's more towards the design side. So let's look at some of the blueprint paths. So this is again, not the full blueprint. Blueprint, blueprint uh, link is provided in the, your resources uh, in the, in the, the in the slides coming uh, after Brandon, but you will see that uh, these are the some of the tasks that you will find on Network Assurance Blueprint. Now, when you look at the tasks, uh, and you look at the right side and the left side, on the on the 1.1, 1, 1. 1. so for, give you an example for 1.1, 1. 1. you see determine agent type, such as synthetic, user agent, scripting, locals, all, all those nine yards. So when you look at it, and we look at that, the left side, this shows us at the analyze level. and like we have been covering when you see this the determined word and you see at the analyze level that means it may be a simple task but it will not be straightforward which agent does this or something like that it will be more like you will be given some requirements you will be asked to accomplish something then based on that based on your knowledge which agent type will you deploy there what will be there? Is it an endpoint agent? Is it an enterprise? Is it a cloud? Is it a scripting? Is it a TCL base? So it all depends. The, uh, what kind of agent do you deploy there? When it comes to 1.5, as you can see, is remember. And what remember means? We covered that. Remember is the theory. So instead, describe the integration between Cisco technology. We will not be asking you. How, to, how do you go in and how do you configure, what is the API and all these things, but more like the theory knowledge of it, whether you know it or not. Uh, what is the concept behind it? What is the theory behind it? What is if maybe some memory recalls there? And when we look at apply like 1.8, select a Cisco network assurance platform, uh, it seems like simple, but you need to know based on the business requirements, the, what the business wants to accomplish. Based on that, you will be asked that which assurance platform will you deploy? Now, I mean, what are the different tools that we are talking under this? Uh, we will show you in the next slide. As 2.6, implement common web authentication methods. This will cover the implementation piece or the configuration. So these are all these apply level tasks that you see. They're not just simple memory or theory uh, uh, type of question. They will be asked you on the tool itself. So you need to know, you need to get your um, hands involved, hand, get, get your hands dirty with the technology and the tools, play with it, know, navigate, how to uh, configure, how to implement, how to do what you want to do. For example, if you want to do an HTTP test, or maybe you want to do an agent to agent test, or maybe something you want to collect from Meraki and you do that uh, piece. How do you do it? How do you configure it? It's more like uh, involved. So higher than des describe, higher than remember. And then on the 3.1 or 3.4, you'll see that it's diagnose, right? So diagnose, again, like I mentioned, when we talk about network issues, such as packet loss, congestion, routing, and jitter, all these, you are collecting data. And once you are collecting data, you see an issue going on. Something is happening in that. Is it the network issue? Is it a DNS failure? Is it the HTTP? What is it going on? So based on that, we will, you will be given a, a, an exhibit. You will be given some scenario. And then based on it, you will be asked, what is wrong? What is going on? What is the problem? What is the issue? And 3.4. 3.4 is an, an interesting one and important one as well. You see, it's um, identifying security issues. Now, when we're looking at, we're talking about today's technology, we're talking about hackers, we're talking about DDoS, we're talking about so many things, you know, BGP hijacking and all this. 
this is more a bit higher level, uh, although it is analyzed, but it is really going into the tool, trying and navigating it and finding the issues. Maybe some are closer to the others, maybe some are related. So you need to know, you need to understand how to navigate, how to pinpoint the problem. And for 4.4, like we said, validate alert configuration and functionality. This is more like you already have done it and now you're validating it, whether what you have done is working as it is designed or as what you wanted. So questions will be around that. And when it comes to 4.5, recommend optimization for network capacity planning. We, I mentioned it, it is more like you have a baseline. You have something uh, already observing uh, or collecting data for it. And then based on that information, you will be shown some exhibits, some data, something there. And then based on that, we will ask you, what would you recommend to resolve this issue? What will be the, your recommendation? Maybe it's a QoS issue. Maybe uh, it is uh, Christmas time and maybe uh, the links are saturated. So maybe you have to do something about that. Uh, is it used, resolve it with QoS? Do you increase network bandwidth? Do you do something else? Maybe you route your traffic to a different path. I, I don't know, what, what do you do? So you will be asked, you will be shown something and then you will be asked based on that, uh, what would you recommend to uh, solve this issue? I hope it gives you a very good understanding of the blueprint, its tasks and its cognitive level that how do you, what kind of depth of knowledge do you require? Now, on the bottom, you see the exam available on May 20th. So if you go in view and you try to book this exam today, it will not be available. It will only be available from May 20th and onwards. So you, this exam will be available and you can book it on May 20th. So what are the tools? What technologies you're talking about? So on this slide, we're trying to help you out because maybe, maybe you're not seeing everything there. So on the blueprint, when you go through the tasks, sometimes you see a tool listed, sometimes you don't. So this is where you see what to expect. So the tools that we are talking about under network assurance, uh, and again, um, for some of the things, like for example, for Determine 1.1, it has more exhaustive list than this one, but major tools are Cisco Thousand Eyes, Meraki, Cisco Meraki, Catalyst Center, which uh, some, of you may know as DNA Center, Cisco SD-WAN Catalyst Analytics, which was a V analytics before, and Cisco App Dynamics. These are the tools for the assurance. So I would also mention, when we're looking at these tools, please do learn how do you integrate these tools? Because Thousand Eye is more like a one pan of observation. You go there, and you can collect data from any of these tools. You can collect from Meraki or Catalyst Center or uh, Analytics or App Dynamics or what have you. You can collect all this information. So if you are on the Thousand Eye, for example, and if you want to look into some wireless issues or some cloud issues, you can go there and, and observe that and you can find out. So learn how these things work together. How do we integrate everything in Thousand Eyes? And then obviously uh, some of the tests, agent to agent, how do, you, how do you collect data between these tests and network end-to-end -end device issues, web application issues, application issues. We will not, in this exam, we will not ask you some deep application type of questions or application related issues mostly, but it will be more like, so you have a web applications or you have HTTP tests or DNS or something, and then it will be based on what is going on. How do you either configure it or how, if there is something going on, how do you collect that information? So this is pretty much uh, it. Now, optimization for network capacity planning is baselining and uh, let's, uh, so, that's pretty much it from me, and I'll pass this uh, to my friend, Brandon. Uh, Brandon, you are the presenter now. 
I see that I'm a presenter. Well, thank you, Mohammed. Yeah, so I'm I'm Brandon Cross. I'm a technical education content developer. And I want to talk about uh, the training that we have that aligns with that certification blueprint Mohammed just mentioned. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. Um, so here you can see that uh, within our content, uh, we have all of the topics and platforms Mohammed was just uh, speaking about. Uh, you can see that we have content on Cisco Catalyst Center Assurance, App Dynamics, uh, Cisco Catalyst SD WAN Assurance. Got all sorts of content on uh, Cisco Thousand Eyes, as well as some content on Cisco Meraki Network Assurance. And so, uh, the designing and implementing Enterprise Network Assurance are in a, a Cisco U Learning Path. It consists of four tracks, 17 um, micro courses. It's, uh, it includes all sorts of things. It has all sorts of videos. It has content and text that you can read through. It has labs. Um, and as you can see at the bottom of this slide, you can see that you can actually uh, access the first track for free uh, by going to that URL. I believe this will be posted later on as well. Um, but in terms of the ILT, it's the same set of content. It's just that the instead of having videos, you have an instructor presenting the materials. It's a four day, in, uh, yeah, four day instructor led training. Um, so within the training, there is uh, 13 hands on labs. So we got a whole bunch of hands on labs for you. Uh, you know, basically you'll be able to work with all the platforms that we've already mentioned, get a uh, interact with or do a lab with uh, Cisco Catalyst Center Assurance, another one with uh, Cisco Catalyst SD WAN, and then you have what? What is that? Nine labs with Cisco Thousand Eyes, and then a couple labs with uh, Meraki Assurance. So a lot of good hands-on stuff within these uh, trainings. And by the way, this uh, these labs, these are the same labs. It doesn't matter if it's you're uh, using the uh, Cisco U Learning Path or if you're you're taking the training through an ILT. And for those of you who are interested in what the topology looks like, uh, this is essentially what it is. Um, as a learner, you primarily interact with this uh, lab PC, which is essentially a jump host, a bastion host, if you want to call it that. Uh, it's basically just a VM that you get access to uh, that resides within our lab infrastructure. Uh, but uh, within this VM, you have all the proper permissions, all the uh, tools and applications that you need to perform uh, the lab tasks. And so, um, uh, when you spin up a lab, you get access to this VM, but you also get a set of credentials for the platform you're working with. So if you spun up a Thousand Eyes based lab, you're going to get credentials to get into the Thousand Eyes portal. So you get to work with the, the real Thousand Eyes, right? Um, uh, same thing with Meraki. If you spin up a Meraki lab, you get um, access to the Meraki dashboard or credentials to get access to Meraki dashboard. Uh, also, uh, our SD-WAN analytics lab, uh, it's actually using our dCloud infrastructure. So when you spin up that lab, you'll get a set of credentials for that. Um, but anyhow, this is uh, just a quick overview of what's in that training or in the training. Um, but uh, um, now I guess I'll hand it over to Tanner real quick to uh, talk about a few more um, uh, resources that are out there. Of course, yeah. thanks so much, Brandon. Really appreciate it. I'm gonna go over a couple different resources and training materials here for you over these next couple slides. Uh, just as a reminder, all the resources and links that we are showing you throughout today's presentation will be available for you to access on the Cisco Learning Network. I'll provide uh, a larger link here in a little bit uh, to where you can access everything in one spot. Um, as Muhammad mentioned earlier, going live the week of May 20th, you can sign up today free for the Network Assurance Prep Program. Uh, you'll gain access to a number of different things, including exam topic review sessions, webinars, a self-study prep guide, and much more. Um, you can sign up for that today and register for free. Um, also, currently, we are in a round of rev up to research, which, lo and behold, surrounds network assurance. You can get 16 continuing education credits for absolutely free through the DNAAS learning path. Uh, you can get those credits for free up until May 6th. Though, so there is a expiration date on those. Uh, once again, we'll provide this link for you here in the chat as well uh, and on the Cisco Learning Network later for you to access. Also coming up here in a little over a week, we have the Cisco U Spotlight event. 
uh, that you can register now for free, uh, something that you do not want to miss out on. We are super, super excited uh, as a team and an organization to bring you. I'm going to have a number of industry experts and thought leaders speaking to you all, and we will also announce our next round of winners for the Cisco Learning Network Community Spotlight Awards. So you can register for that free today, uh, and that comes next week, April 24th. Also just wanted to share a number of other resources that uh, basically just a full list here. Again, these will be available to you on the Cisco Learning Network. 15 day trial, uh, if you're just getting started, a getting started guide with Thousand Eyes, uh, the network assurance exam topic blueprint as well, uh, a video playlist on YouTube for a number of different network assurance videos. Uh, the learning path uh, track one for free, as Brandon mentioned moments ago, as well as some blogs that you can read up on for network assurance. We'll provide uh, some of these links for you here in the chat, um, as well uh, as on the Cisco Learning Network. I will share that link with you momentarily in the chat. So from the presentation side of things, that'll do it for us today. We are going to get to our Q&A portion of this event. Uh, just as a kind reminder, if you are attending today's event and would like to ask a question to either one of our presenters, please submit that through the Q&A panel where our wonderful panelists are ready to respond or we will answer your question here live. Um, I will open up the floor to uh, Abdiel, Mohammed, and Brandon for whoever um, would like to answer. Wanted to just get a, a couple softball questions here for you. Um, let's start with um, what would be your advice for the type of labbing candidates uh, should do in preparation? Okay, I'll maybe I'll, I'll take this one. Um, Go. So if I understand the question correctly, is talking about the labbing equipment. Is that what I understood? Like as in performing, like working with hands-on type of activities? Yeah, yeah, what should I do to prepare for that? Uh, well, I mean, there's a number of things. Obviously, you could uh, take the official training and get access to the real stuff, you know, go through those labs. Uh, some of the, the uh, CTF stuff that um, Abdil talked about earlier, that's a, a great resource to get your, you know, start working with and diagnosing root cause issues using Thousand Eyes. That's a perfect way of doing things. Um, uh, you know, just uh, if you, um, you know, get your hands on any sort of Meraki gear or anything like that and uh, uh, work with the, uh, um, uh, you know, Meraki dashboard, Meraki insurance, Meraki insights. Uh, that may be a little bit more unrealistic because it does require some insight licensing, but if uh, maybe uh, your employer or whatever may be able to provide that. But uh, uh, I guess those are some suggestions for me. And Great. Can, and if you don't mind, I'll ask a little bit of follow up. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, and m maybe Mohammed, this might be a good one for you to talk about as well as, you know, basically, from an exam topic standpoint, you know, how should folks be looking at the hands on lab kind of practice lab um, a strategy, right? Like what kinds of things should they be looking to lab in order to prepare for the exam versus like, like you mentioned the theory questions or the, the memorization type question. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, that's so the, um, uh, a little hard one, depending on the organization structure, right? Because uh, all of these tools, you know, they're not like everything is not freely available to practice. Yes, there is thousand I uh, free exam that you can learn and practice. Some of the things, if we go to Cisco, so your best bet is Cisco U actually. If you go to Cisco U and you find uh, DNA training, then one has access through corporation, then you have uh, all the labs available there, whether it's related to Meraki or whether it's related to DNA center or whether it's uh, something else. So that that for labbing, that is the best because, and then I think there are uh, free free licensing for 15 days or something for 1000 eyes. Uh, so you can practice on 1000 eyes, but med, uh, for uh, other stuff is not everything is freely available, but to, so uh, through, uh, if somebody has deployed, for example, Meraki, and they have MX controller and everything. Uh, maybe not 
not uh, if they don't have access to configure it at least if they have the view and they can request the view version of it they can see how the policies are deployed how things are working there right this, this will not prepare them for the configuration but this will prepare them for verifying validating and diagnosis piece so it's um, when it comes to equipment, most of the time it is a tough one because not everything is freely available. Yeah. Hope I answered. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mohammed. So yeah, I think um, one of the things I was wondering about there is specifically within the exam topics and like you mentioned, the um, what were the, the different verbs that you, you mentioned there? You said diagnose, troubleshoot. Yeah. I think you mentioned yes. one other. Yeah, so 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 you can do diagnose uh you can definitely validate the configuration you can do pretty much everything except remember it's theory so you can implement select you can configure you can diagnose you can validate you can recommend all these things are through the tools so if one has access then go through it learn how to configure some of the tests maybe it's an agent to agent maybe it is a http test maybe it's a web uh, hook is maybe script configure that learn that how exactly it works then if if once you deploy that test and um, maybe if you have a lab environment introduce some problems and then see how it reflects in the tool and how if, can you navigate through it can you identify the issue so those kind of skill set, if you go through the tool and you work on it, then you will build everything pretty much. Whatever is there on the blueprint, you will cover it. Whether it's select, implement, configure, diagnose, validate, recommend, you will cover everything. But but you need tools for that, hands-on. Uh, Tazunai, Meraki, all these tools you need. Got it, perfect. Thank you so much, Mohammed. And I guess, Brandon, a little bit of a follow-up question for you as well. Um, Jason asked in the Q&A, about the promo for track one for the course, the learning path inside of Cisco U and if labs were included. Um, and I just want to kind of take it back to the idea that the wealth of labs that are available in that full learning path, right? That's correct. And in that first track, there are three labs available there. Yep. Thank you, Brendan. Okay, Tanner, sorry about that. Thank you. I think you might've gone back on mute, my friend. Yeah, thank you for talking to myself over here. Um, just as a reminder to our attendees, if you do have a question, we still have a few minutes left during our Q and A uh, segment here. Please submit those through the uh, Q and A panel here, and we will get to them. Let's see here. Um, and and this may have been off. Um, your question, Matt, um, was they just wanted to rephrase their question. A tool like Thousand Eyes can only be used on Cisco-based network, or can it be used in a hybrid network setup? It can definitely be used on a hybrid uh, setup. As if you want to look at the recording later, uh, when I talked about use cases, um, if I, I'm getting your question correctly, uh, there is a, definitely a use case for you know hybrid uh, monitoring your remote uh, users from the endpoint perspective, but also monitoring the um, network uh, of those sites or individual remote work offices, if, if you want to call them that, uh, and you know making sure that um, there's a path all the way to whatever that user is. Um, um, needs you know whether that's an application it's as platform an api service whatever they're consuming you can monitor that from the endpoint uh, on a hybrid uh remote worker perspective i hope i i answered that your question perfect thank you thank you uh let's see here uh i have seen a couple questions uh again about sharing the recording uh from today's uh presentation provide some details on that soon uh the recording will be available on the cisco learning network and the playback will also be available uh immediately following today's session on youtube so you can access the playback at any time uh we'll share some updates for you on that um to answer, I can answer Brian's question, the, the network assurance exam. Yes, it is under the CCMP um, enterprise certification. Um, 
for some may know for the shortened version, it's the 300-445 ENNA exam. Um, and just as a reminder, I see some questions floating in through the chat. Please uh, aim to shoot those through the Q&A panel. That way we can sort them um, just a little bit better. And Tanner, if I may, I'd like to just add on the 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 um, point you made about it being a part of the CCP Enterprise uh, track, sure. and just you know to highlight that um, it's a concentration exam, but one of the key points is that it's also a specialist certification, so it stands on its own as well. Um, so whether or not you choose to combine that with the Enterprise Core exam in order to um, combine those two exams to, to meet the full CCMP enterprise qualification or not, which is also a great strategy. Just passing this one exam alone awards you the network assurance specialist certification as well. So I just think that's worth um, repeating and emphasizing so that folks really kind of understand the value of it on its own as well. Great, Matt. Thank you. Thank you for that for sure. Um, and um, let's get, go ahead. If you don't mind, yeah, there's just a couple questions that came in the chat that we answered written, but might be mm -hmm. worth mentioning verbally as well that yes, this exam does count towards all of the recertification requirements for any active certification you hold. So CCNA, CCMP, CCIE, et cetera. Um, and then also, uh, Abdiel, I know you also wanted to mention a little bit about some of the lab resources from the Thousand Eyes side of the house as well. Would do you mind taking a moment to talk about those? Yeah, sure. Just real quick. Um, it's pretty easy if you sign up for a trial. You have the link here on this slide and also on the chat. So if you want to get a taste of uh, Thousand Eyes, um, I think it's very important if you look at the blueprint and the training course, you'll realize that there's a, a, a big chunk of it here. So in order for you to pass the exam, you, you must have hands on on this. So just to summarize it, anything that you see configure above you really need to get hands on. So sign up for a trial. Uh, you can deploy all kinds of agents really easily. Um, even if you don't have, you know, like hardware available, like a Cat 9K to test or uh, the enterprise agent on, you can still deploy it in the form of a Linux package, in the form of a Docker container. Um, you can deploy it uh, on an EC2 instance in AWS or Azure or whatever uh, cloud provider and uh, you can assign tests to it. And with that, uh, you know, you can configure alerts, you can configure dashboards, uh, et cetera. So you, you, with that 15 day trial, you can get a lot of visibility, a lot of hands on uh, for free, you know? So make sure you do that. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you are aware that it's something easy to get to um, and it will be a good, hands-on experience for you all. No, I think that's great. And I think one of the other things that's uh, exciting to know about that is in uh, progress coming from, from yourself is the uh, study plan that you've worked on uh, putting together and that we're going to work on publishing over on the Cisco Learning Network community for folks as well. So, um, you know, just to kind of give a preemptive teaser plug about that really nice resource that's coming from um, that is in, 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 in progress with us as well. Yeah, definitely. We, we're working on a study guide that will be published um, and uh, where we will help you, you know, sort of focus on those parts uh, of what you need to know and how you need to prepare in order for you be, uh, to pass the exam. Hey, Matt, uh, I don't know if it was mentioning. We also cover this uh, certification under multi cloud certification on Cisco Live. And it does have uh, some exam questions, sample questions. So that one can see that how exactly we are looking at it. So I, I think not everybody goes to Cisco Live, but then it will be available on demand. So that is another resource for you to look at it. Perfect. Thank you, Mohammed. Well, Tanner, looking at the clock here, um, we're right about the top of the hour. Do you want to go ahead and we can wrap up the audio portion and then we'll do some more follow-up Q&A? Yeah, you Pretty got written. it. You got it. Uh, just want to take a quick moment and say uh, thank you once again to Abdiel, Mohammed, and Brandon and our whole team for bringing your knowledge to the Cisco community today. Uh, we truly, truly appreciate it. 
Uh, as Matt just mentioned, if you do have a question for us, we'll keep that Q&A window open for a couple more minutes uh, and try to answer some of your questions. For even more tutorials, demonstrations, and future webinars, please visit the Cisco Learning Network. I just placed a link in the chat screen for you, which is our post webinar discussion thread for today's event. Uh, that will include all the resources that we talked about during today's session and direct links to those resources, as well as playback options in case that you missed part of today's presentation. Uh, you can watch the playback on YouTube and it will also be uploaded to the Cisco Learning Network in the coming days as well. Your feedback is important to us, and at this time, you'll be directed to a post-webinar survey. Please uh, take the time to fill that out. It helps us plan out some future sessions and try to bring you more content that you all are interested in. Once again, we thank everybody for joining us today, and we will see you next time on the Cisco Learning Network.